The president is back into the country and we all have been able to read the presidential broadcast and um, a lot of Nigerians are disturbed by the contents of that broadcast. A lot of people feel that the broadcast has indirectly asked Nigerians to be quiet about a lot of things. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, generally we, we do. Um, but for us it's not surprising because we had envisaged that the president would take this line of action. Therefore, on Sunday, uh, this last Sunday, we issued this press statement advising the president to, to the part of statemanship. That is to say, he must um, see the agitations in the country as a call to national service. He must uh, act like a statesman to address the agitations. Instead, uh, oh, fortunately, the president did not heed our uh, advice and he, uh, decided to adopt a military approach. A, a, in my opinion, the presidential broadcast was more of a, a broadcast by a military leader rather than a civilian president, and it's quite unfortunate. A part of the broadcast um, read that said that um, Nigeria's um, unity is not negotiable and Nigeria must remain as one. We know that the president just returned from the UK and even in the UK there are talks of revisiting both Brexit and Scottish independence. If people can discuss do-overs of electoral discussions after less than five years, how much more 50-year-old wartime decrease? Yeah, he, he, I think part of the reason is because of the background that our president is coming from. He's coming from a military background. And you know that in the, in the military, your training primarily is to protect the territorial integrity of Nigeria. What that simply means is that you are to ensure that Nigeria remains as one in the military. But in a democratic setting, in a civil society, it's a different ball game altogether. So, uh, and the earlier the president realized that fact, the better for him. In a democratic system, people must continue to re-examine concepts. There is nothing that is cast in stone. Even the existence of Nigeria is not cast in stone. Nigerians have a right to ask whether we still need to be together as one country. So the president was absolutely wrong to say that the unity of Nigeria or the indivisibility of Nigeria is non negotiable. It's not true. In any case, people are not saying that Nigeria should be dissolved. What we are saying is that the basis of our togetherness should be readjusted, should be reconstructed in the interest of this country. That's what people are saying. Nobody is saying Nigeria should not exist. All the calls for self-determination from the Niger Delta to the Southeast, to the Southwest, and even the Middle Belt is a call on the leadership of Nigeria to sit down with the people and decide how we should go forward as a people. But unfortunately, over the years, we have had um, leadership that do not respond to the which is an aspiration of the people. Speaking of agitations, the Enjoy Youth Council has recently come out to say it has disassociated itself from the Biafra struggle and agitations. What exactly prompted that? Yeah, I think that I, I need to make this point uh, very clear. In uh, my inaugural speech uh, uh, some months ago, or uh, weeks ago in Worry, I made a point clear that we are not part and parcel of uh, Biafra. But I didn't want too much emphasis to be placed on that. What is the most important is that number one, we have uh, a struggle that predates that of Biafra. The Ijon people, through their leader, Isaac Dakaboro, in 1967, declared a republic, the Niger Delta Republic, which lasted for 12 days. And that republic was declared even uh, before uh, um, Ojuku declared the Biafra Republic. And that's why we said, look, we have a separate identity. We are not parcel and parcel, part and parcel of Biafra. But we are, if it needs, to, it need be, if it gets to the point where everybody have to go their way, we wish to be on our own and not part of Biafra. And let, and let me make the, the, the point here is this: what is most important is that we uh, believe in the struggle for self determination. Although it may mean different things to different people, but while we share in the aspiration for self determination, it should be based on mutual respect. There should be respect for the Niger Delta people, there should be respect for the Middle Belt people, there should be re respect for the Southwest people. Just in the tone, uh, uh, on the other hand, we also have respect for them. But nobody should make any attempt to encroach in the, on the territory of the other. But why is this coming? Why is this disassociation coming? at the time, almost at the time when the ROI youths have uh, come out to give a quick notice to the Igbos um, residing in the northern part of Nigeria to vacate before October 1st. You mean the, uh, our dissociation of ourselves yes. from yes. the... No, no, we, are, we, have, we have always maintained that uh, position. You see, if you remember, uh, as a student of history, you recall that the major reason why the Biafra 
uh, uh, Republic died in 19, from 1967 to 1970 was the inclusion of the minorities of southern Nigeria. That is, uh, when Biafra was declared, what is today known as Bayasa, Delta, Edo, and Rivers was included. In short, the whole of South South, let me put it that way, apart from Ondo State, yeah. the whole of South South was included as Biafra. And that was the main reason why Biafra died. Because when this area was included, without the consent of the people, the Nigerian military, uh, or the Nigerian government under uh, Gawon, brilliantly went to the prison. At that time, our leader, Adagaburo, was in uh, uh, a prison at that time. They went to him, brought him out to say, look, we are going to give you pardon go and fight on the part of the Nigeria uh, government. And they did so, and uh, led to the killing of uh, Biafra. So, in my view, uh, the agitators of Biafra, if they are students of history at all, they have no business including the part of the Niger Delta, or whoever do not want to be part of their republic. Why we share, we, are, we agree that they have a right to de uh, demand for self-determination, they shouldn't include parts that are beyond their area. Then on the issue of quick notice, there is no correlation between our demand for uh, uh, our uh, case for a separate Niger Delta identity and the quick notice that was issued to uh, Igbo people in the north. It, 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 that quick notice is baseless, there's no basis for it. The fact that I'm asking for self-determination is not a reason for you to give me quick notice. And in any case, and like I've heard earlier said, that quick notice is politically motivated. It is some persons in the north who want to hold on to power at all costs. They are just using that one to test the waters because uh, in recent times, the political origin has been very, very unclear. So they were trying to use that one to test the waters to do a lot of things. And that's very unfortunate that we condemn that. It was reported in the media some time ago that uh, the IYC stated that if any southerner was was going to be attacked yes. in the north by October 1st, the IYC would retaliate. Now that the IYC has disassociated itself from the, from the Biafra agitations, would mm. this still hold? No, we, we maintain that position. I, I actually said that. I, the, the reason is that if, uh, um, for instance, you are moving on the streets of uh, uh, Kaduna, for example, mm -hmm. there's no distinction between an Igbo person or an Ijon person, or between an Igbo person or Yoruba person, or an Ikwere person and um, a, an Igbo person. You see, in the northern part of the country, it is either you are from southern Nigeria or you are from northern Nigeria. And when they talk of northern Nigeria, not just uh, places like Lokoja and the rest, but the extreme north. So we envisage that if they are to enforce that quick notice, our people in the north may be victims, just like as it has happened in the past of that attack. And you recall that certain Nigerian uh, leaders met in uh, Lagos here under the leadership of um, uh, uh, Oxford, former director of SSS and a joint leader from River State, where they agreed that, look, if you attack one, an Igbo band, you have attacked the entire uh, Saturn Nigeria and what the IYC did through my humble self is to reiterate that position and we stand by that. What is the recent updates on the continued detention without trial of Niger Deltans by the DSS, which the ICC has described as the breach of the Niger Delta peace process? Yes, I, 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 it's, it's, uh, the, a lot of uh, them are still under detention. For instance, the spokesperson of the IYC in Abuja, as I speak to him, Mr. Alex Odogu, is still under detention. Uh, Mr. Bonnie Gawe, who was an uh, agitator, is under detention. The uh, spokesperson of the Ijeon People Democrat, uh, Development uh, Initiative, uh, Mr. Ezekiel, Daniel is under detention and several others. And the unfortunate part of it is that some of, in just some of these cases, the people have gone to court. The DSS refused to appear in court, yet they are holding them under detention. What is the ICC doing about this? The I you, why, why say? The, the, we, we, the, the, best, the, the best we can do is what we have been doing, which is to let the world know that the, that the continued detention of those people, especially in view of the peace process that is going on, is a threat to the peace process. Because when we met with the acting president at Oporoza, the then president of the IYC, my uh, uh, predecessor, Oden Seradiri, did inform the vice president, look, a lot of Niger Deltans are in detention illegally and the vice president said bring the list of those people and we have submitted that list long ago and I must be honest some of them were released but a lot of them are still under detention without trial and that is unheard of in a democratic setting the beauty of democracy is respect for the liberty of people if you arrest somebody you must take the person to court if you have any case against him but the significant part of this arrest is that there are people in detention without taking being taken to court and they're not just in detention they are in underground detention cells and it's very unfortunate I don't know what the IYC is doing, but there's been a lot of um, anger coming up from the, from the 
residents from the people who live in that area as regards the, the cleanup process they are angry land is polluted water is polluted air is polluted how do you what are your reactions to this what is the iyc doing what is the pan niger delta group Pandas. doing what are these organizations doing? Yeah, the 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 um lack of implementation of the Ogoni cleanup initiative is very unfortunate unfortunate because the Ogoni cleanup is supposed to be a pilot project to clean up the entire Niger Delta. It may interest you to note that what is happening in Ogoni is replicated all over the Niger Delta. The entire Niger Delta environment is completely destroyed. So our understanding or our hesitation before now has been, look, when you start Ogoni, after Ogoni, you move to other parts of the Niger Delta. And that's the reason why when they were about to start to, uh, the Ogoni cleanup and there were a lot of politicking going on by way of awarding contracts to small, small companies for political reasons, we raised alarm. We said, look, if Ogoni cleanup fails, it means that the entire Niger Delta cleanup process will fail. And that's what is happening. It's very unfortunate. And we would like to call on the president who said he was committed to the Ogoni cleanup. In his inaugural speech, he referred to the Ogoni cleanup. And he sent his acting or the vice president, as the case may be, to flag off the Ogoni cleanup. And we had expected that government would display utmost sincerity. But that's not be the case. And uh, I want to use this opportunity to call on the federal government to display goodwill, to display sincerity by going on and completing the Ogoni cleanup so that other parts of the Niger Delta can be cleaned up as well. There was a 90 day um, ultimatum given to international oil companies to relocate the headquarters to the headquarters and administrative offices to the Niger Delta oil producing states. Is that ultimate to stay on? Um, to what effect is this? No, I, 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 I think that um, they, there was a miss of somewhere and that has been addressed. The um, uh, acting president during his visit to Uyo made a statement that all multinationals should relocate to the Niger Delta region. Mm -hmm. That statement was made without a time uh, uh, limits. You know, if you just make a presidential pronouncement and you don't attach a time limit to it, a roadmap to it, then it will just be hanging. So all that the IYC is demanding for look is that look, it's not enough to make a presidential demand, but follow it up with a time frame. There should be a time frame within which to uh, relocate uh, co uh, corporates and operational headquarters of multinationals to the Niger Delta region. And that's exactly what, where we still stand on. But the uh, sharing part of it is that in the last meeting between PANDEF and the federal government, that issue was discussed and there is going to be a follow-up meeting where that will involve the multinational companies with a view to implementing that presidential directive. If the government intends to embark on a cleanup process and we still have an existence small oil mining companies companies do we call them companies now firms or you know places where they just locally um, local refineries yes you know uh how do we is this not like trying to sabotage the efforts of the government if the cleanup process eventually begins you, you see the the uh if you read the unep report on organic cleanup the cleanup is um a process on its own you know part of the cleanup process is for you to address social demands people embark on local refinery because of poverty so if you want to clean up the, uh, an environment you are supposed to address some of these challenges and in any case uh, you might have heard of the idea of modular refinery yeah. modular refinery is meant to address these problems people go uh, do illegal bunkering or local refinery as they call it because of poverty so for us to have a clean environment in the Niger Delta, there must be uh, 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 the environment, the, the, the issue of poverty related issues must be addressed. The motto of the IYC is um, self-determination by any, resource all, control and by all means yeah, necessary. Any means necessary. Yes. How does the IYC intend to achieve this? Yeah, the, the struggle for self-determination and resource control is not a marathon race. It is a continual uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, like a marathon race. It's, it's continuous, continue to race. It's not a one-off uh, race. Uh, it, we have made uh, progress in the past. In the past, when we started, nobody knew about our uh, issues. But today, our issues are now global. Because of our agitation, today we have uh, a 13% derivation. Today, we have the Niger Delta Development Commission. We have the uh, Ministry of Niger Delta. But all these do not address our ultimate demand. Our ultimate demand is to have control and management over the, the oil resources found in the Niger Delta or any resources as the case may be.